Hey fellow pool players, do-it-yourselfers and programmers, I think I found a problem that will interest all three groups. How do you fit a large pool table into a small room? Throughout the ages, man has battled this age-old question. Shorty cues, jacked up cues, smaller tables, or just abandoning the idea altogether of playing a decent game of pool at home? Well, I think I have the solution. I fell into the same trap as many before me. I bought an 8-foot table and put it into a basement not even big enough for a 7-foot table. On day one, I just jacked up all my shots and missed most of them. Day two, I pulled out the dreaded shorty cue and missed most of my shots. On day three, I decided, screw it, I'm just going to move the cue ball, but you're never going to learn positional play by doing that. On day four, I decided to YouTube for a solution. Believe it or not, this is the only video solution not on YouTube. What I found was a pool table built on gyroscopes so you can play on the seven seas and a pool table built into an elevator that disappears into the floor. Not really the solution I was looking for. How hard can it be to move a 600 pound pool table? Let's break the problem down into smaller parts. I've got my pool table, got a wall here, and I've got a wall here. I need to move laterally 24 inches. Position A, position B, position C. It needs to stay perfectly level. I also need to be able to move the table fast enough that it's not going to interfere with regular play. I figure about six seconds from the time I take a shot to the time I walk over to a new position and I'm ready for a new shot. And it needs to move between those points without that happening. Next thing is whatever system we're on, if it's on a railing system for example, and I'm leaning on the table, once it's in position A, B, or C, there can't be any lateral movement if I lean over it. I'm 200 pounds when I lean on the table. I put about 35 to 40 pounds of pressure on the side of the table with my belly. It needs to lock into position. So I figured the best way to get the pool table moving is to put it on rails. If Serge from Russia can pull a train with his teeth, I think we can move a 600 pound pool table. So the idea is that we've got two pieces of angle iron. One's going to be sitting on top of the other. And this one here will have the pool table sitting on top of it and it can roll back and forth. So we got the table on rails and we're ready to do our first test. So I took the feet off the pool table. That brought the pool table down by an inch and a half. We then put the pool table onto our sliding angle irons. That brought the table back up to an inch and a half. So we started at 32 and a half inches and we're back to 32 and a half inches. Surprise, surprise, when we move the table, the pool balls move. I didn't see that coming. So now that we've got our table on rails, we need to know how much force it takes to actually move the table. So I've got my fish hook. Nine pounds, that's even better than I thought. All right, moving right along here. So we know that we need nine pounds of force to be able to move the table. We need to find a motor that can move nine, 10 pounds. I took the smallest motor that I could find as a stepper motor. That's the NEMA 17, a controller, an Arduino, put together a small little mechanism, which you'll see here, and I tried it at two and a half pounds, tried it at five pounds, tried it at 7.5, and 10 pounds. That small little motor can move the 10 pounds. I say we over-engineer it and get the next one up, which is the NEMA 23, uh, four times as powerful at least. So what we have here is an integral part of the solution. We're going to attach our stepper motor here. This ball screw is going to be physically attached to the pool table. And as that ball screw moves, it's going to move the pool table laterally. So I chose a ball screw to move the pool table. Why a ball screw? Well, a couple of reasons. Reason number one, remember I told you we needed to be able to make sure that the pool table would not move when you're leaning on it? The ball screw has that advantage. The ball screw cannot move left or right, cannot move laterally by pushing on it. We need to be able to move this pool table approximately 610 millimeters from point A all the way to point C. The way you figure that out is the ball screw will turn four millimeters in one revolution. So 610 divided by four, one revolution is about 158. So we need to turn this ball screw 158 turns in order to take the table to move it from there to there. The pool table is going to move quite easily, but you might have noticed that the pool balls moved a little bit. Well, in order to solve that problem, what we need to do is we need to introduce some slow acceleration, cruising speed, deceleration when we go from A to B. That intelligence comes in the form of an Arduino. This guy costs 
$12, $15, I think, on Amazon. Really, really cheap. It's called a microprocessor. Standard computer, I take my Arduino and I write a very, very simple program. I can actually link to it in the video. I'm going to tell the Arduino that I want the stepper motor to accelerate at a certain speed, cruise at a certain speed, and then decelerate. If you listen carefully, you can hear the acceleration, cruising speed, and deceleration. So I've got everything set up, ready to go, and I've got push buttons underneath, which are not really that practical for moving the table. So I wired up an infrared receiver, and I took the remote control from the television you see over there, and I put the infrared receiver just by the door over here. So it works, but to varying degrees of success. So let's give it a try. Infrared works great when you're sitting on the couch and your television doesn't move. When it's got to go through your body or through anything else, need a better solution. We tried infrared. That was a complete failure. You need line of sight. Solution, key fob. As long as I'm as close as I need to be to start my car, I can press the button and the radio frequency will go through my body, jip rock, stairs, whatever. Key fob, here we go. Test number one. After spending the day with the key fob trying to get it to work, I finally realized what the problem was. These key fob receivers don't come with antennas, so I had to make this little howdy doody antenna, and that solved the problem. So maybe you're wondering if uh, you've got a nine foot table, will this setup be strong enough? Well, I'm sitting on the table, so another 200 pounds, approximately the difference between an eight foot table and a nine foot table. So I had a lot of fun putting this project together and I was really surprised when I started Googling the first time to see that there was really no solution out there. You know, I think the reason that we didn't see this solution before is because it kind of takes three skill sets. It takes uh, somebody who loves playing pool, myself, it takes a do-it-yourselfer, and it takes a programmer. And for all of those, I would say it takes probably basic to intermediary skills in order to pull off a project like this. I put together something that I find more than adequate, works very, very well for me. I've been playing with it for a couple of weeks now. After two weeks of play, really I think the only thing that I would change in this project would be I would change the stepper motor for a servo motor. Servo motors are whisper quiet and that would really be the only improvement. Everything else works perfectly. So my name's Scott. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.